Hello, welcome to the recording of the introductory video to our series on bipolar disorders and new perspectives. And thank you all for coming and joining me uh, for this event. I will explain why we decided to prepare these videos, what the topics will be, and to whom. And the main messages of the series are, first, based on our research and clinical work carried out over decades, more effective treatments for bipolar disorders are now possible. However, beyond the diagnosis, they have to be easily, uh, carefully tailored to the individual clinical profile of, of each person. Second, better, more comprehensive understanding of the nature of bipolar disorders is now emerging. And third, the concepts of bipolar disorders, and in fact of psychiatry, is really now undergoing substantial transformation. Following the radical discoveries, and radical changes that took place during the 20th century in all hard sciences, from quantum physics to chemistry and even biology. Over many years, the knowledge about bipolar disorders has been steadily growing. Psychiatrists have now available more and more uh, treatment strategies and also many additional medications. Neurotechnologies provide us with additional insights into the functioning of the brain, both under ordinary circumstances and in distressed ones. So, psychiatry has definitely become more knowledgeable and better equipped for helping. But is this increase in the knowledge really reflected in the treatment outcomes? Now, in clinical practice, have we psychiatrists really become wiser about what's actually wrong and how to help individual people with bipolar disorders? How to help them effectively? And that's a big question. In fact, the pr practice and in the practice, the current treatment outcomes leave much to be desired. And there are still many unanswered questions about what actually leads to the breakdowns. Even the justification for the diagnosis of bipolar disorders is now hotly debated. The bipolar diagnosis diagnoses do remain as a useful tool for communication, administrative, legal purposes, but they are increasingly seen as questionable and antiquated, antiquated constructs. So new perspectives uh, on bipolar disorders are definitely needed. On the other hand, what is very clear is that bipolar disorders and their various manifestations, including many recurrent depressions, are all very prevalent, very common. Recent careful epidemiological studies estimate that the life risk of experiencing some form of bipolar disorders is quite high, somewhere between 6 and 10 percent of, of the population. In addition, the frequency of mood disorders in general has also been on the rise. And the World Health Organization statistics document this very convincingly. Moreover, when mania and depression struck, it can have quite a devastating effect on the personal and professional life, on the family and, and the relationships. Now, some people know about bipolar disorders mainly because of famous people who suffered from these conditions. People such as actress Vivian Lee, writer Virginia Woolf, poet Lord Byron, composer Robert Schumann, painter Vincent van Gogh, Winston Churchill, just a few examples that one could bring up. However, most people actually know about affected people among their friends and their family members. And they find that the treatment outcomes these days uh, are often unsatisfactory and that the understanding of, of the predicament is usually incomplete. Now, during the five decades in our programs for people suffering from mood disorders, 
we have made surprising new findings. Uh, some reflect much better treatment results than generally reported. Some describe safer strategies. And based on long-term investigations of the natural course of bipolar disorders, some findings actually offer a radically new explanation of what happens, what leads to the disturbances. And when our observations do differ from the mainstream literature, I think it's because the working conditions we had have been different. I think they've been more conducive to learning more, more comprehensively about bipolar disorders and therefore offering new insights. First of all, it was particularly helpful that we were able to study these disorders, study their natural course of these disorders for a decade even before the maintenance treatments have been introduced. So we saw unadulterated courses. Then, in our programs, we were able to treat and investigate many bipolar patients longitudinally, prospectively, for up to 45 years. Moreover, we could take care of these patients together with their families, children, grandchildren, and that perspective offers new, richer insights. We could see their other relatives, even family trees exceeding at times 100 members. We have also been able to combine uh, clinical practice, research and education, all with the same patient population. Besides, we've had really good fortune to work for years closely with uh, people, with colleagues, leaders who shape the modern concept of bipolar disorders. Colleagues such as Professor Mogen Skow, who discovered the benefits of lithium, Professor Jules Angst and Carlo Paris, who formulated the concept of bipolar disorders, Professor Bruno Milo Erlinghausen in Berlin, who uncovered the anti-suicidal effects of lithium, Fred Goodwin in Washington, who wrote the most uh, comprehensive textbook on, on manic depressive illness, actually, and several others. Thanks to such mentors and colleagues, uh, it uh, was possible for me to see not only patients in Canada, but also in seven European countries and in the United States. I've also been very fortunate with my collaborators, whom I mention in the coming videos, Professors N. Duffy, Martin Alda, Eva Croft, Thomas Hayek, Michael Bauer, and some others over the years. And I have always been blessed with, blessed, blessed with exceptional staff. And in addition, with many understanding patients who uh, participated willingly in demanding studies and, and taught me so much about, about what the predicament is about. So I'm very grateful that we have had these exceptional conditions for learning about these challenging mood disorders. And it was this very fortunate combination of circumstances that made it possible to get some useful new insights into the nature of bipolar disorders and effective health. And it is also on this basis that uh, we prepared a series of videos on bipolar disorders that we are now placing on the internet and placing on, on YouTube. Most of these videos are shorter, 20 to 30 minutes. The contest is of necessity simplified and um, it's intended for broader audience. The audience may include younger psychiatrists, family physicians, as well as curious patients and their families who already know some of the basic terminology but look for more knowledge. It may also be of interest to curious people anywhere. Today these people uh, find it easier to uh, reach the information through the internet and videos rather than through publications. So, if you suspect that there is more effective help for these conditions, if you're searching for better understanding of what's happening in bipolar disorders, 
if you believe that the research in these conditions should advance faster, then you may be interested in some of these videos. Now, what aspects of bipolar disorders do these videos cover? Let me just give a few examples. Some topics you would expect. They are standard, some important aspects of the history of bipolar disorders. Diagnosis, bipolar types, clinical course, both in adolescence and in adulthood, possible precursors of bipolar disorders that may take place in childhood. And some topics are more specialized. For example, neurobiological findings, psychosocial aspects, principles of treatment and management, treatment guides, transpersonal aspects, research directions that, that are needed uh, to take place. A very fascinating area of bipolar creativity, uh, I'll particularly focus on composers such as Robert Schumann, Rachmaninoff, Scriabin, and others. So interesting and important topics like that. But the videos also go beyond these issues. Bipolar states such as depression and mania are non-ordinary states of the human mind, human consciousness. And therefore, you will also find videos covering the new radical insights into the nature of, of, of human consciousness. Some amazing new perspectives on the relative role of the brain, the, the local consciousness, and the non-local consciousness as they are involved in bipolar states of the mind. Why videos? People these days look more and more for answers on the internet, away from books, journals, and publications. Videos on YouTube reach more people faster. They um, are understood more easily than print. Of course, in short videos, you can uh, naturally present only selected and simplified material. But we can focus on the areas that are particularly new, crucial for, Im for improvement of treatment, or relevant for better understanding of, of, of the predicament, of the underlying processes. To expand these points, selected references will be uh, added, uh, will be listed at the end of some of the videos. They can then lead to uh, much more information one can find in the literature in, or in our publications. Furthermore, as new information emerges, our videos will be later updated. We plan to release these videos gradually, one approximately every few weeks. So, thank you very much for being here today and participating. And I think we may have time for a few questions. Dr. Groff, uh, you mentioned that in future videos, um, you'll be discussing diagnosis. Um, in terms of the findings over the last several decades, um, will you be discussing the DSM-5 and criteria and maybe how it's changed um, diagnosis between bipolar and the differences between diagnosing bipolar and other mood disorders like borderline personality disorder or the personality disorders? Yes, I will. But the main point really will be that diagnosis, if one wants to help the patients and if one wants to know what the natural course might be without treatment, it's, the diagnosis is only the first step, the diagnosis of bipolar disorder. One has to go beyond that. One has to look at the individual profile of, of each person. The, the clinical course over, over time, the family history, the child development. If one wants to really help effectively, the diagnosis is not enough. Hi, Dr. Groff. Thank you for your presentation. My question is rather general, and I suspect, therefore, rather difficult to answer. But I'd like to know, do you think that bipolar is increasing in society over the years? Well, there are very good, uh, there's, there's very good evidence for that. The question is, uh, it appears that part of it is a real increase as part of the increase in mood disorders and addiction that, that are worldwide, well documented. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, of course, we are paying much more attention course, and, yeah. and diagnosing much, much more often because we know, we know more about the conditions.
Thank you, Dr. Groff, for your talk. You speak to new perspectives on bipolar disorder, and I'm wondering if you could actually enlighten us on what you mean by new perspectives versus the previous perspectives that were previously held. Because uh, we talk a lot about the age of onset at work. We talk a lot about the family history, the self-reporting versus the family identification. But what is a new perspective on bipolar disorder? What do you mean by that? I, I really mean by new perspectives what we learned from the special opportunity that we had uh, learning over decades about the clinical course, learning about the, the family history, learning about the profile of the patient, learning from the children and grandchildren, uh, learning how different the manifestations are. So these, by new perspectives, I, I mean what we have actually learned from the specific situation we've had. Thank you for being here today again. It was very kind to dedicate your time. Thank you for listening and thank uh, to those in, in the audience on the internet who are watching the, the video and I invite you to look at the future videos as, as they will appear on, on YouTube. Thank you. Mm -hmm.